Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be teaching you Feynman's trick for integration, rather than working on my college apps, which are all due within the next couple days. Now, as these deadlines rapidly approach, I will continue to make content for you guys. So, uh, I hope you appreciate that, but anyway, let's get started. So, first off, for Feynman's technique, we are going to want to define a part of this equation as a variable of itself. So we are going to make a new function, which I will call f of a variable alpha, which is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of our function. Now we need to choose one of anything in this equation to be our alpha. So in this case scenario, I am going to choose this pi right here which will make a lot of sense later in this video, or in a little bit, and that's something that you will be able to see over time after doing this integral a lot, or over, after doing these types of integrals a lot, where you will be able to recognize when and where to apply this method. So this becomes the integral of x to the alpha minus 1 over ln of x dx. Now, we have this function right here in terms of alpha and x. However, this is only a function of alpha because the x's in this equation are actually going to cancel out once we integrate, so we do not need a bound of x over here. So the next step that we are going to do is we are going to differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to alpha, and this will be a partial derivative. Now, if you don't know how partial derivatives work, I will teach this to you really quickly. So, this side is just going to give us f prime of alpha, which is equal to, now we are going to move this partial derivative onto the inside, and we are going to rearrange this function, just by going like this. This is the partial derivative with respect to alpha of x to the alpha divided by ln of x minus the partial derivative of, uh, with respect to alpha, of 1 divided by ln of x, and this term, and this is all with respect to x of course, this term right here, this is with respect to alpha, there's no alpha in this term right here. So, with respect to alpha, this is pretty much saying the derivative of 5 or something with respect to x. So, this is just going to become 0. So, this goes away. Now, this, on the other hand, is actually a very strange derivative that you don't see too often in calculus. You will see it a lot, or you don't see it too often in your AP calculus classes that you take in high school. And this is just the derivative of something that is not e raised to the x, the derivative of this with respect to x, is just a to the x times the natural log of a. Now in this case, our a is our, or our alpha is what we are differentiating with, differentiating with respect to, and that is in our exponent, and our a is actually just our x. So this becomes the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the a times the ln of x, as that is how we differentiate this with respect to alpha, divided by the ln of x. And this is with respect to x. Now these two lns, they just cancel out. And we are left with the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the alpha with respect to x. And that is equal to, oops, that is equal to our f prime of alpha. Now, I'm going to do something real quick that I should have done at the beginning. However, I kind of forgot. So, let's define f of 0. So, f of 0 is equal to x to the 0 minus 1, the integral of that. However, this just becomes 1 minus 1. So, this means that f of 0 is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 0 with respect to x, which is just going to be 0. So we have this piece of information right here, which is that f of 0 equals 0. And we will need that in a few steps. So this integral right here just becomes x to the alpha plus 1 divided by alpha plus 1. 
And this is evaluated from zero to one, which just gives us one to the alpha plus one, which is just one. So this is one over alpha plus one. Sorry if my alpha looks a bit weird there. I'm writing it sideways. So our f prime of alpha, so f prime of alpha is just equal to one divided by alpha plus one. And now we are going to integrate this function with respect to alpha on both sides, of course, which will then give us on this side just f of alpha, which if you remember, that was just our initial integral with this, uh, with this um, variable. And that is equal to, this just becomes the ln of the absolute value of alpha plus one plus a constant c. And I will make this red just for continuity as well as this one. I know I missed a couple in here, but that's okay, whatever. Um, and since we defined f of zero as zero, we can now plug that in. So if we plug in zero for alpha, we get f of zero equals zero equals the ln of, this becomes zero plus one, the ln of one plus c, which means since the ln of one is just zero, that c is equal to zero. So what we could say is, I'm going to erase this, make sure you remember this step before it goes away. So what you could say is that the function f of alpha is just equal to the ln of the absolute value of alpha plus one. Now, it is time just to resubstitute our alpha in here. And if you remember in our initial integral, this was just pi as our alpha. So that means that this is just f of pi is equal to the ln of the absolute value of pi plus one. So this is just our initial integral. So we can say that, I'm going to erase this stuff now to write our final answer, which is that this integral right here is equal to the natural log of pi plus one. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and good luck for those of you who are working on your college applications right now. Best of luck to you. I hope you get in everywhere that you apply and thank you for watching.